We are each born into this world without choosing. To our parents, to our certain location of time and space, to the particular conditions of our body. As we open our eyes, we peer out at a world moving around and onto us. We exist here and in the oncoming fleeting moments of our infancy, with no say in any of it. Soon we will age past infanthood and into our cognizant awareness of ourself and the material world around us. And soon, to paraphrase existentialist philosopher Jean-Paul Sartre, we will begin to face the problem of choosing what we do with what's been done to us, to decide what we make of everything, what it all might mean, and what we do with it. Jean-Paul Sartre is one of the most widely recognized and cited thinkers of existential philosophy, a movement of thinking that took form during the 19th century, fashioned by individuals like Soren Kierkegaard, Friedrich Nietzsche, and Fyodor Dostoevsky, and then further popularized by individuals including Albert Camus, Martin Heidegger, and of course, Sartre. In Sartre's lecture, Existentialism is a Humanism, he famously summarized the primary existential principle with the line, Existence precedes essence. Essence here meaning the qualities of a thing that create its purpose. For example, Sartre references how a paper knife is designed with a specific purpose in mind before it is made, and only once it is given a predetermined purpose and designed accordingly is it manufactured into being, in which case its essence precedes its existence. With exception to itself, humanity does this with nearly everything it makes. As rational beings, we create out of reason. Even if the reason is to make the point that we can create things for no reason, we have merely found ourselves in the paradox of creating for the reason of having none, which remains a reason. We exist with the innate desire for reason, what we do, who we are, why we are, and so on. And here lies the beginning of our existential problem. According to Sartre and many others, there is no predetermined meaning or reason to human life. There is no authority figure designing us or our lives, and there is no essence to our existence prior to our existence. But rather, life exists for itself, and beyond itself, it is intrinsically meaningless. Whenever our sense of reason and logic confront this potential realization, that the nature of life, including the most essential part of our life, ourself, appears to not agree with the same order of reason, we can often find ourselves in a sort of existential crisis. However, Sartre and the existentialists don't see this as despairing, but rather, justification for living. If we are not made with a specific purpose prior to being, we create our purpose through our being. In other words, only through the choices we make and the actions we take in life can we create who we are and what life means. Man, Sartre said, is nothing else but what he purposes. He exists only in so far as he realizes himself. He is therefore nothing else but the sum of his actions, nothing else but what his life is. The byproduct of this, of life's inherent meaninglessness, is an inherent freedom. A freedom to choose who we are, how we live, and what matters to us. And here we experience the next rung of our existential problem, the anxiety or anguish of choice. With essentially an infinite potential number of choices and combination of choices for how to live and think and be, the anxiety of choosing properly can be rather heavy. Ironically though, the choice we make here, in reaction to the anxiety of choice, is perhaps the most important choice of all. The easier, knee-jerk response to the anxiety of choice is simply just not choosing. To mindlessly assimilate popular common templates and ideas of life, following standard routes of belief and purpose laid forth for us, and deflecting nearly all the responsibility of choice onto others and the circumstances of our life. However, Sartre referred to this as bad faith, a form of lying to ourselves and denying our basic freedom, a short-term attempt to dampen the anxiety of being that in turn cost the potential loss of our true self and true sense of the world. Even choosing to not choose is still a choice. There is no escaping the requirement of choice. Choice can only be minimized to choosing or not choosing. And this is perhaps the fundamental existential choice, to choose or not to choose. For in this choice, one either harnesses the anguish of human freedom or relinquishes it, either builds a life of intention or lives a life of complacency. We each have our little flickers of time here. No one else will ever know much, if any, of what it's like to be who we are and for the most part, no one will ever really care. Our life is ultimately our life, and so long as we are not harming others in the process, we must create a life of our own meaning, determining our own objects of importance, committing to their pursuance, and reaping the significance and wonder of life along the way. Truthfully, we seldom have sufficient enough information to properly make any choice, including how much we might agree with Sartre or anyone else. Throughout our life, we are faced with serious decisions about what we believe, who we are, and what we do, and mostly none of it is self-evident. And if we look, we will always find a reason to regret any decision we make. Move or stay, agree or disagree, take the job or quit, marry or divorce, live one path or another. In all cases, whatever the choice may be, we will only ever know the outcome of the one we take. 
and none we take will ever ultimately resolve the uncertainty of life. However, perhaps it is less about getting a potential course of life right, and more about attempting to do so with an effort of self-honesty and virtue, to live a life that can be looked back at with the knowledge that some of our decisions were perhaps wrong in their effects, but right in their intention of not selling ourselves short. It is, of course, incredibly hard and complicated to grapple with life, to consider the abstract concepts of existence and meaning and being. However, the overwhelm and challenge found in this, in the whirlpool of uncertainty, absurdity, and responsibility, is perhaps the unavoidable price of the great gift that we all are given at birth. But it is just that, a gift. And to face up to the abyss, to feel the anguish of choice and potentiality, to bear the weight of self, all are but visceral, humbling, beautiful reminders of the potency of life running through our veins. And perhaps our only job is to realize this and make the gift worth its price. Agree with Sartre or not, ultimately, his ideas are a reminder to do just that. To risk the easy and commonplace for the unique and great. To work towards our full potentials in the face of all obstacles, including ourself. To take responsibility for our life and what we make of it. Ultimately, no matter what we do or say or believe, there will always be a great many who disagree or judge or ridicule or become upset by our decisions. But it is of essential importance that we try as often as possible to ensure that among those people, ourself is not one of them.